Hey, what's going on YouTube? So today I have another N64 fix that I'm gonna be working on today. This one has a little bit more different issues going on, but I wanted to go ahead in any way and record uh, going through it. I've already troubleshooted in the past um, and this one seems to have an issue with the power light not coming on, the controller port on number three not working, and I just found out that the reset button doesn't work. So we'll go ahead and start um, trying to fix some of these things and I can go ahead and show you. So here we go, it's powered on. The light doesn't turn on. And you can see here, if I try to hit the reset, nothing's going on. And then let me go ahead and show you what happens when I try to connect to the third control port. We end up getting an issue where it sometimes picks it up, but if you move it a little bit, has this kind of weird behavior, just kind of not consistently connected. So we're gonna go ahead and try to fix these issues. I'm gonna go and show you, I've, I've known a couple of these. Um, and let's go ahead and, and just kind of go through those things. So. All right, I got rid of everything on here, uh, disconnected everything. So the next step is just gonna be to go ahead and open the 64 so we can see what's going on with it inside. All right, now that we got all the screws removed, the next thing we're gonna do is of course, just get rid of this and take a look inside. So uh, one of the things is that this is really rusted. So we're gonna go ahead and clean this outside. I won't do it in this video because it's gotta let, I gotta let it sit in the solution for a couple of hours just to make sure I get rid of all that junk off. Um, and I'll go ahead and clean it up after I go ahead and fix this. So. We're just gonna move on and just continue fixing this, but I can already see that uh, there might be issues here with this particular, it might just be really dirty. I, ha I do have another video where uh, I show how to clean it, but I I'm gonna do it in this one anyway, so you can see uh, kind of the steps that I go through. So the next thing is I'm gonna remove um, the 64 from the bottom housing and it's simply not too bad. Uh, I'm just gonna fast forward through everything, but it will be removing these two and these two silver screws in the back, these two in the back as well. And then there's um, these two next to the jumper pack as well as these six screws that are located right there. So I'll go ahead and just start doing that now. Now I've been having issues with this particular screw. I'm just gonna hit it with a little bit of WD-40. I'm just gonna use some paper that way it doesn't hit some of the other components on here. Just let it sit there for a while gonna let it soak in all right guys so I actually had to go ahead and uh, wait to record the next day because I couldn't get this particular screw out it was really rusted on there I ended up buying just a product on Amazon it has a funny name it's called vampires um, but it's used to take out these things it actually has like the grooves here it's a little different kind of uh, curved and I did test to see if it was going to grab and turn it and it seems to work it's just really really slow so let's go ahead and just kind of work that screw until it comes off it's really rusted on there but we'll eventually get it so i'll just go ahead and fast forward until i get this i don't think y'all want to see me unscrew this anyway All right, so you can see that we took it out there. I mean, this tool was really good. It's not like your regular set. You can see it's kind of curved. I highly recommend it as this thing is completely stripped off. I mean, it looks like there's grooves, but trust me, it's uh, completely stripped off. Um, and I, I really didn't want to damage the board. So I'm going to go ahead and just toss this screw out because I don't want to use that. And you can see here just how damaged this, this board is. It's extremely rusted. Um, so we're going to go ahead and continue removing the remainder of the screws and uh, all this other stuff. My guess is that at least for the things that do have issues, like perhaps the reset button, this uh, power light switch and uh, the control port, I do think that they're probably just corroded. I mean, seeing as how dirty this board is, so let's just go ahead and remove that and, and get that all cleaned up. I'm gonna go ahead and just remove this. It's just really rusted. I mean, I'm gonna go ahead and take care of this 
at some other point. Um, this thing is really stuck on there. Trying not to damage it, but it's really rusted on there really well. I'm gonna have to really polish all this stuff. I mean, it's just completely corroded. Uh, for something like that, I might just replace the entire part. I have some spare parts and uh, I really don't feel like cleaning this. I mean, they might be cheap if you can buy them online, but look, I mean, this thing is just completely damaged and it's just too thin. It's it's probably not even worth the, the trouble of trying to clean it, but for those thicker pieces, um, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna go ahead and clean those. I mean, something like this, can't even get this one out. It's covered in rust, I mean, look at this. It's just completely done. I mean, I can go ahead and clean it, but just seeing as how the condition of this is, it's probably not worth the trouble. I mean, something like this right here is, I mean, it's just a little bit, right? I mean, this can get cleaned up and polished. Um, it's nothing, no harm in that. Even something like this, I mean, this can get cleaned up right here on the sides. And uh, you can see here, it's really rusted. Um, still salvageable. So one of the things that I actually end up using uh, to get rid of all that is this product called uh, Evaporust. And things like the screws, for example, I actually put them in a little glass jar. It's uh, like a container like this. And so you can see something like Let's take a look, something like this here. It's really rusted. Or something like this here. See how rusty it is? And I just simply dump all the screws in here uh, just so that that stuff can fall off. And um, whenever I'm going back and cleaning, I just go ahead and polish the heads or just kind of use a paper towel to remove the top of the, the surface of the rust. And um, before I put them back on the board. That way <clears throat> it doesn't cause any issues later down the road. So let's go ahead and just do that now. So this has all the screws in it. I'm gonna probably not open this until tomorrow. As for this, I mean, this board is completely dirty. Look at it, it's just really grimy. Has a bunch of rust all over it. I mean, definitely has quite a bit of work. This is just gonna be, uh, unfortunately, a video just to kind of go ahead and get all the pieces working in terms of getting all this rust cleaned off. It's gonna probably take some time. I'd have to, you know, take it back and just kind of polish it. But I'll go ahead and do that at some other point. For now, let's just focus on getting this <clears throat> fixed up. Whew. So, like I said, look at just how rusty this is in not so good condition i definitely don't want to use this i mean i have some spares i think i'm just gonna go ahead and use that because this is not that good so one of the first things i'm gonna do is just go ahead and use compressed air let me see if there's anything down here oh man this thing is just really dirty uh i will clean this after but i'm gonna just use some compressed air and blow all this rust out. That way I can go ahead and just give it a nice clean with some alcohol since this is looking pretty rough and I gotta clean a lot of this stuff out before we can start working on it. Um, that way we can you know, start soldering and just reflowing some of those things. So like even back here, we can already see that this is extremely corroded and might be causing those issues with uh, this control port. I think maybe the best thing is probably just to replace it all together. Seeing in the condition that's in, it looks pretty rough, but I mean, we'll, we'll take a look at it. Anyways, let's go ahead and get this cleaned up. I'll be right back. All right, so I actually went ahead and prepped the board and got it ready. That way I can go ahead and start working on it. Um, I'm just gonna start working on these pieces right here. It looks like I mean, we didn't have uh, the light.
light showing on the power. So let's take a look at that real quick with the multimeter and see if we have any connection. Maybe it's just dirty or something. So I'm gonna turn this on real quick. Just gonna test this one, for example. I am getting How about the next one. Okay. All right. So it's stating that it's working, but uh, these these joints actually don't look that good. So I'm just gonna go ahead and reflow this really fast. This is not gonna take that long, honestly. So. Let's go ahead and get that going. All right, let's test it out and see if this works. And nothing. The light seems to still be showing off, doesn't work. So I'm just gonna go ahead and replace this now and see if that fixes it. Uh, might just be broken at this point. So I will be using a solder sucker and this just helps so that I can get rid of this uh, solder here on these points, makes it just a lot easier for me. So let's go ahead and just warm it up real quick. <laughs> So now we're going to remove this from this other board. So this one's a working one. I'll just go ahead and get this one's from the bad board. I had used it in one of the previous videos. I'm just going to go ahead and remove this. We can salvage this. So we went ahead and removed this one. This is from the bad board, as you can see. So this is the one that we're gonna now use on the working board. So let's go ahead and solder that on there. All right, we're gonna go ahead and just hook this up real quick and test it out. So I'm not gonna connect everything. I'm just gonna go ahead and just test this to see if it works. And it looks like it's working now. So we got this fixed. All right, so what I'm gonna do next is just remove this while we have it. I mean, I know we gotta replace it. <clears throat> I'm also gonna just pre-tin these joints right here. That way it makes it easier uh, to just pull them out. So let me go ahead and just do that now.
All right, so now that we removed that one, we're gonna go ahead and just clean it real quick. Uh, it's real dusty down there, so let's just get some IPA. Looks like some of the plastic broke off right here. So we'll see if we can remove that real quick. So now that this one's ready, we're gonna go ahead and just remove the, the other one from the good board and replace it and put it on here. So let me go ahead and do that now. All right, so we were able to get this one out. Let's just go ahead and give it a quick clean um, now that we have it out. It's just a quick clean for now. I mean, we're gonna go ahead and give a thorough clean after everything's done. But for now, just to kind of make sure we put it cleanly on the board without uh, introducing any more poor contacts on here. Check it out. I almost reinstalled it in the bad one. So looks like this one's really well clean now. Just looks good. Just wondering why it was dirty. All right, so this one, we're just gonna we soldered the joints back together.
So here we're just going to test the the third port and the fourth one are working. So let's connect that real quick. And if I wiggle it, looks like it's working fine. Alright, let's test port number four. And that one seems to be working fine too. Alright. So well, that's two fixes. Let's disconnect everything once again. And the last thing we're gonna be working on is just that reset switch. And this one's pretty simple. So well, I think it depends. For the most part, this one is just really dirty, but um, I did have a previous video in case you all don't know how to test the, the reset switch. It's these two right here. Uh, so let me zoom in actually, so you can see better. So this is the reset switch right here, these five that are sticking out. But if you touch these two right here, the two far right, this one and this one, it's a little hard with these. But whenever I push the button on the other side, it's supposed to be on a working board. So just to kind of show you what I'm doing is um, putting these two right here and then pushing it down. So one of the quick ways to fix this, and I'm actually just going to switch out to my tweezers. Just makes it a lot easier. So I have these tweezers so that I can test out the, the backside. So whenever I just touch them right here, and I'm not getting anything. But like I said, to fix this, normally what I do is um, I just pour 99% isopropyl alcohol in here. I just drench it in there. And then I just kind of work it in here, just moving it around. Try to loosen some of that stuff up. And I pour a little bit more, but you have to make sure that it's 99%. That way it dries out. You don't want to introduce water or any other stuff to those components. That's the reason why we use 99%. If you use 91, I mean, you can run into the risk of having water that's just sitting there. And uh, 99 just tends to dry out really, really quick. Sorry for the shaky camera. All right, so now we're going to test the back again. Let's see if this fixes it. So there you go, you see? It's an easy way to fix it. So right now I'm using that and it's working. You don't even have to push it all the way through. With that, I'm just gonna let it dry out a little bit. Let me zoom out. I'll let it dry out by just simply taking my time to clean some of this stuff off in the meantime. But if you do have compressed air, I would recommend that you just blow some compressed air into the reset switch. That way you can dry it out. It's not gonna harm it in any way. As a matter of fact, it might even help it clean out some of that dust and move it out of the way. Um, so let's just double check that everything's working. So like I said, it's just those two right here and everything seems to be working just fine. So just for the final test, we're going to end up connecting this back together. And let me get my control. And the jumper pack. All right. So everything's on and we're going to be testing the reset. And there it is, it's working. There we go, just resetting it, testing it. So everything's working, everything looks good. Uh, we went ahead and did three fixes on this particular Nintendo 64. Hopefully you all learned something from it. So just to kind of reiterate, we fixed the power switch, the power uh, light. We fixed the control port number three uh, by replacing it. And then we also fixed the reset switch. So. If these are any things that you run into, any problems that you all run into, 
Um, you can always use this video as a reference, but of course, um, I do have a couple of other videos that show something like no sound and some of the other reset. And I do have a cleaning video to kind of handle some of that rust and um, just kind of cleaning a board all, all together. So if this is something that y'all like, make sure to drop a like and also leave a comment below. I'm trying to grow this channel. I'm fairly new to YouTube. If there's anything that you all see that I'm doing wrong, or maybe I'm just not showcasing something uh, clearly, just let me know in the comments and I'll go ahead and address it in future videos. Uh, but like I said, if y'all like this, make sure to drop a like and feel free to subscribe. Thank y'all.